compare these two patches. The first one was pretty static, while the second one had a lot of motion. The patches were the same except for one module, Falistri, which for this reason is our movement manager. Let's dive into it. Falistri consists of five sections. The two topmost ones, which are yellow and green, are identical and generate control voltages, often called functions. The three lower ones, grey, red and blue, process the voltages, both internal and external. By combining these sections, we can obtain an infinite variety of control voltages to animate our patches. The yellow and green sections generate functions, which is a fancy name for a specific kind of control voltage. According to Alan Strange's definition, a function is a control that defines a parametric response. In other words, we can think of it as a control voltage that we use to modulate the parameter of our sound, like timbre or amplitude, over time. For example, an envelope or an LFO or any voltage that can predictably and continuously change its value. Let us start from the envelopes. An envelope is a function with a precise duration, during which the voltage rises, falls or even remains steady for a certain time before returning to its initial state, which is often zero volt. We shot the FRAP talks on envelopes and functions as a whole that I will link here and here in the description. An envelope usually starts with an external timing pulse, either a trig or a gate. Check this other video for the difference between the two. The two generators are the same, the yellow and the green one, except for a detail that I will cover later on. So for now, everything that I will say about the yellow generator is true also for the green one. So let's patch Brains' final output to our CGM and patch these output here to wait for their CV input. Let's then set this switch to the upper position and this one to the middle position. We will explain very soon what they do. Our function starts here with the trig and gate section. If we push the button, Falistri will fire its envelope. Our timing pulse makes Falistri fire its raising stage and once it ends, it will immediately fire the falling stage. We can see a visual cue through this LED here. With this configuration, Falistri will generate a two-stage envelopes with a raising stage and a falling stage. During the raising stage, the voltage will go up and during the falling stage, it will go down. This output that we used is the unipolar output. The voltage coming out of it will go from 0 volt to 10 volts. We can scale its effect over the Brenso oscillator through the attenuverter here, but you can hear that when the envelope is not active, nothing happens regardless of the position. By rotating the rise and fall knobs, we change the time of the corresponding function stage from very slow to very fast. Rotate the knobs counterclockwise to make the envelope faster, very snappy, and fully clockwise to make it slower. Let's automate this behavior by triggering the envelope with SAPL's clock output instead of manually pushing the button. It will perform the same function as the button. Through these knobs here we can change the envelope shape from exponential to linear to logarithmic. Please note that the duration stays the same. These two inputs here allow us to control the rise and the fall time. A high voltage will make it longer and a low voltage will make it shorter. We can patch a random output from Sapel's sample and hold to change the duration of our envelope at every trick. If 
our modulation target does not have an attenuverter, so such as a brain source a symmetry parameter, we can use Falistri's attenuated output. By rotating this knob clockwise we will attenuate the envelope and by rotating it counterclockwise we will invert it. We have said that with the transient behavior the falling stage will start immediately after the rising one. At the end of both stages Felistri will output a gate high signal. The end of rise gate goes high after the rising stage and goes low at the end of the falling stage. The end of fall goes high at the end of the falling stage and stays high until the rising stage comes back again. For this reason, when Falistri is idling right now, the end of fall stage will always output a gate high signal, even when you just turn on the module. As you can see, as soon as I push the button, the end of fall stage will go low. And if we have a quite a long rise time, we will have a moment where both the gates are off. Then, as soon as the falling stage begins, the end of rise lights up. And when the falling stage ends, the end of rise goes off and the end of fall goes on. Now it goes without saying that if I set my rising time at the minimum level, as soon as I push the envelope, the end of rise will light up. We can use these gates to trigger other musical events in our patches. For example, we can patch the end of fall to bring source ping input. This way, as soon as the envelope reaches 0 volt, it will fire a gate that will trick the pinging circuit. Or we can patch the end of fall to control our brain source source level. We have a rising stage that just opens the wave folder. As soon as it reaches its peak, we have a gate that dramatically changes the source level, bringing in the square shaper, the pulse shaper. And then, once the wave folder closes again, we have a ping over the same circuit. Now, let us set this switch to the right. This generator is now in hold mode. After the rising stage, it will stay high as long as we keep the button pressed. Let us replicate the previous patch. However, if we patch our spell trig to this input, we won't notice much difference with the transient behavior. This is because the trick only lasts a few milliseconds. To better appreciate the hold mode, we need a gate, such as the Usta sequencer. This is a classic configuration to control our notes articulation, because we can play with the gate length to emphasize a certain note. that when the gate is very long the two notes will tie together because the envelope won't have time to trick its falling stage. Now let's move on to the final behavior and move this switch all the way to the left. Wista is now in loop mode and it will re-trig itself after every falling stage. This is an LFO with controls over the rising and falling times and shapes. Please note that in this configuration the end of fall will become a trig, since it lasts just for the millisecond that separates the end of the falling stage from the beginning of the rising one. The end of rise, on the other hand, will last for the whole falling stage, providing a square LFO.
What we do through this switch can be automated via the force loop input. So when the generator is set to transient or hold, every gate that we patch to this input will force it to loop mode. For example, we can use a gate signal coming from the other generator that we set to loop mode. that as soon as this gate is high this generator will oscillate as an LFO and when it returns low it will rest. Most LFOs are bipolar so if we need that behavior we can use the bipolar output. Its signal goes from minus 5 to 5 volts instead of 0 to 10. If you want to use the bipolar output with envelopes, so you can do it as well, but you must keep in mind that the rest stage will offset our parameter down by minus 5 volts. So for example, if we patch a unipolar envelope to a target parameter, patching or unpatching the cable when it is resting won't make any difference since it is at 0 volts. The last output that we need to check out is the max output. It output both the attenuated outputs of the green and the yellow generator at the same time, but only the higher of the two values will prevail. You can think of it as an analog OR. Now, in this case, since our green generator is off, we hear only the yellow generator. However, if we set the green generator to loop as well, we create two LFOs at different frequency. When the yellow LFO goes low, we hear the green one coming up. The envelopes routed to the max output circuit are the attenuated ones, so they are always unipolar, even in the positive or in the negative range. Now that we covered the max output, we can talk about the quadrature mode. In this mode, the two functions stages depend on each other. We start from the yellow raising stage. Once it ends, it stays high and triggers the green raising stage. The green end of rise then triggers the yellow falling stage while the green generator stays high. The yellow end of fall then triggers the green falling stage, bringing the quadrature to the end. The four stages are now linked together and we can balance them. To activate the quadrature mode, you must set the green generator to hold and set the switch to the right. The yellow generator can be set in every mode. If set to transient, the quadrature duration is fixed. If set to hold, you can prolong the yellow hold stage and hold the green one as well. If set to loop, you will obtain a complex LFO. We can patch the green and the yellow generator to different targets and appreciate how they are connected together. However, the quadrature mode really shines through when we use the max output. We can play with the attenuators to create complex shapes. For an ADSR envelope, however, we must make sure that the decay starts right after the attack. So we must set the green raise time all the way to the left. Please note, however, that the sustained part of an ADSR envelope now depends on the yellow falling stage duration and specifically it is the time where the yellow falling stage is lower than the green maximum level. the green rising time we obtain an AHDSR envelope and if we set the yellow generator to hold we can also have a variable hold duration. A consequence of the quadrature mode is that now we can have four gates that are chained together the end of rise and end of fall of the yellow and green generator and we can use them to create some non-standard rhythmic structure by patching them to different points of our patches. Let's go back to our default state and check this switch over here. It defines the generator's time scale. So far we've been using it to slow, so it behaves as an LFO or an envelope ranging from roughly 10 seconds when the attack and decay times are all the way clockwise 
to 1.9 milliseconds when both are counterclockwise. If we set it to the other position, we scale it to a much faster pace from 1 second to 0.16 milliseconds, which is well within the audio rate. This suggests us that if we patch the bipolar output straight to our mixer and we set the generator to loop, we can perceive a pitch. And now Falistri has become an oscillator. At this point we can cover the last CV input, which is the volt per octave one. It responds to the volt per octave standard, so we can patch any signal like it to change the oscillator's pitch and play Falistri as an actual voice. It can track roughly 5 octaves. Since the stage's shapes don't change the time, so we can change the oscillator's wave shapes and timbre without changing its pitch. The volt per octave input also works with a slow time scale. The result would be the opposite of the rise and fall CV inputs, so higher voltages will equal to faster LFOs or envelopes, and vice versa. As we said in the beginning of this video, the yellow and green generators are identical, so everything we've been doing so far applies to both of them, except for one detail. If we trick the yellow generator before it has completed its cycle, Falistri will recall the rising stage. This means that if the function is falling, it will immediately jump to the rising stage from the current point. If the function is rising, however, it will just keep rising. The green generator can behave like that, but it also offers a different behavior that we access from this switch on the PCB. When set to rise, we have the default behavior we just described. When set on rest, the generator will respond to tricks only when it reaches its rest stage, ignoring everything else. If you don't remember how you set your green generator, there is a little hack. If you set the green generator to transient and trig it with the button or with an external gate, the green LED will flash only if it is set to rise. If it is set on rest, the LED won't blink. Compare what happens when we feed these two green generators, which are respectively set to rise and on rest, with quite a fast stream of gates coming from Sapel. This one will almost never reach the falling stages because the very fast gates will keep pushing it up. This one, on the other hand, will ignore most of the tricks. Now, if we set the time scale to short and we patch it to our mixer instead of the brain's oscillator, and we feed this envelope with a very fast stream of gate, an audio rate stream of gates, like for example our brain source uh, square wave output, like this, we will obtain a sort of format oscillator that will divide this oscillator's frequency when this time combined is longer than this. Ok, so this was the first part of our Falistri tutorial. We went through all the features of the yellow and the green section, our voltage generators, and stay in touch for part 2 where we will explore the lower section of the module, the voltage processors. I hope you found this one useful and I will see you next time.